What's up, All-Stars? Welcome to the School of Ireland. As I mentioned in a previous video, many psychologists really, really want the field of psychology to be considered a hard science, which just means that the results of an experiment can be replicated through the implementation of objective measurements. And in an attempt to fit in with the cool kids, psychologists use the same scientific method that biologists, chemists, and physicists use. And just like these other subjects, Psychologists start with a question and a theory that they want to find the answer to, and then they go on to develop a hypothesis or prediction as a starting point for further investigation. Now, something that you need to know is that a hypothesis is typically written in a if-then statement. And the reason I mention this is because the college board will often ask students to write or come up with a hypothesis on the FRQ portion of the exam. And if you don't write your hypothesis in an if-then statement, you might lose points. So here's an example of a well-structured hypothesis. If students drink caffeine before a test, then it will improve their test scores. And make sure you take note of this specific example because we'll be referring to it throughout the rest of the video. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the field of psychology really wants to fit in with the hard sciences. And something that the hard sciences are very fond of are reliable and valid experiments. And these are two very important key terms, so make sure you pay attention. An experiment that's reliable is one in which its results can be replicated by someone else. I'll say that again. A reliable experiment's results can be replicated by another person. And the reason this matters is, if someone else can't replicate your experiment, what good are your findings? If your experiment can't be replicated, you won't ever be able to prove a cause and effect relationship between the variables you're studying. And in science, that's not a good thing. Now, in order for an experiment to be reliably replicated, a researcher must meticulously write out each and every step they took throughout the study. And the reason they do this is because if someone else comes along and follows the same exact steps, they will hopefully be able to produce the same exact results. And what's important for you to understand is that in order to ensure their experiment can be replicated by someone else, a researcher must operationalize or operationally define all of their terms. According to the APA, an operational definition is a description of something in terms of the operations, aka the procedures, actions, or processes by which it could be observed and measured. In layman's terms, all this means is that a researcher must provide very specific directions and definitions for each and every step they took along the way. Let's go back to the hypothesis from earlier to get a better understanding of what this means. Again, if students drink caffeine before a test, then it will improve their test scores. Well, let's say that for whatever reason, you decide to come along and replicate the original experiment that's associated with this hypothesis. One of the first things you would probably ask is, how much caffeine did each participant actually drink? I mean, a 12 ounce Coke has about 34 milligrams of caffeine and a 12 ounce cup of coffee has about 140 milligrams of caffeine. Are you starting to see why operational definitions are important? If the variables weren't operationally defined, you might give your participants any amount of caffeine they please at any time interval leading up to the test. Consequently, it's unlikely that you'll be able to reproduce the results of the original experiment. However, if the terms were properly operationalized the first time around, you would know exactly how much caffeine to give each participant and exactly how long before the test they should take it, which would provide for a greater chance of replication. Now, what's important for you to understand for the AP test is that a good operational definition, if applicable, will include an amount of some type, a time or duration, and or some sort of change. For example, Let's say that the original experiment required members of the experimental group to drink 12 ounces of some specific coffee brand exactly one hour before the test. Notice that by operationally defining the statement, drink caffeine before a test, it is now clear how much and how long before the test the caffeine should be ingested. Now in this specific example, there's really no need to describe a change that takes place. However, if they were to operationalize the statement, it will improve their test scores, then they would have to identify exactly how much the test score should change or improve by. Should it be a point? or should it be an entire letter grade? So with that said, it's really important that you know how to write operational definitions for your AP test. So make sure you practice them and make sure you include these elements when possible. Now, earlier we were talking about how in order to draw a conclusion about a cause and effect relationship between two variables, an experiment needs to be replicable. And this is where psychology often gets criticized because a lot of its experiments are hard to replicate. For example, not everybody's gonna react the same exact way to a given stimulus. I mean, a 12 ounce cup of coffee could have a different effect on a 200 pound man versus a 120 pound woman. Heck, 
A 12 ounce cup of coffee could have two completely different effects on two 200 pound men that weigh exactly the same. The point is, as Dr. Michael Krauss mentions, much of what bothers people about psychology is the sheer subjectivity of it all. The problem is that the search for human universals, with very few exceptions, is likely to be a fool's errand. Studying the human experience means asking people how they feel, and these feelings are likely to vary from person to person, situation to situation, and culture to culture. And that is psychology's biggest problem. But more on that later. Right now, we need to transition over to talk about validity. An experiment that has validity is one that measures what the researcher set out to measure. For example, let's say that I wanted to use this scale to measure how out of shape I am. And let's say that I know that I weigh 185 pounds. And the reason I know this is because I've stepped on 10 other scales that have told me so. But for whatever reason, when I step on this scale, it tells me that I weigh 190 pounds or five pounds more than I actually weigh. And we'll assume that no matter how much weight I gain or lose over my lifetime, that the scale will tell me that I weigh five pounds more than I actually do. So if I weigh 175 pounds, it'll read 180. And if I weigh 195 pounds, it'll read 200. So is this scale a valid way to measure my weight? No, because it doesn't accurately measure what I set out to measure. And this is why validity is so important because if a researcher doesn't use a proper test or tool to measure what they set out to measure, then they won't be able to draw accurate conclusions from the data. Let me give you one more example so that you can understand this concept a bit better. Let's say that for whatever reason, your psychology teacher hands you a calculus test on the day of your psychology final. And let's assume that your teacher truly wants to know how much you know about psychology. So the question then becomes, would this calculus test provide your teacher with an accurate picture about how much you know about the field of psychology? In other words, can this test be used to measure what your teacher set out to measure? Absolutely not. And that's because the calculus test is not a valid way to measure your understanding of psychology. All right. So I know we've talked a lot about why psychology is often criticized for not being a hard science. And by the way, I know there's probably some of you out there who disagree with me on this, and that's okay, but I want you to put your counter argument in the comments below. But with that said, you should understand that there are some psychologists out there who are doing legitimately reliable research, and that's awesome. And even though the field of psychology is often criticized because a lot of experiments lack a strong degree of reliability, it doesn't mean that the subject isn't important because it provides us with a picture of what people tend to do in most circumstances. And it also gives us a plausible, if not concrete explanation for why they do it. Additionally, just think of all the people who have really been struggling with something that have benefited from treatments developed by this field. With that said, all stars, make sure you stick around for the quiz and don't forget to smash that like button and hit subscribe if you're someone who wants to dominate your psych class. I'll see you next time. Have a great day.